I can read it. Can you read it? Yeah. I can't read the first question, A or B. It's not in the photo. Yeah. So, and it looks like we got a C, D, and E that are all related. Uh-huh. So, let's do problem two. Is there any way you can retake this picture and have her resend it? Yeah. So that I can see the top of it? Because it looks like there's a lot of information up there. I guess you could read it to me, but... Um, I'll go ask her. What's that? I'll go ask her. I'll okay. Go see if she can send this page again. And make sure she orients it like this vertically, not landscape sideways. Make sure she gets the top of it. She she left off the top. Question one. Everybody okay? Jackson? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. My mom messaged to you. I heard a scream. Uh, look, we can do number two while she's doing that. Let's look at number two. All right, give me a minute. I gotta hurry up my phone. Although, you know what? Number two is so dependent on number one that it really would be better if we can do number one first. All right, I'm back. Okay. Uh, let's, let's do number two while we're waiting. I hate to waste time because we only have a half an hour. Yeah. So okay. while she's sending that, let's look at number two. Okay. What you're going to discover from doing number one is that number two... If I draw an XY grid, yeah. the speed, in other words, the airplane is descending at 100 feet per second. That's the slope, 100. So if I'm looking for an equation that resembles Y equal MX plus B, the M is 100 for the plane, and it's minus 100 because it's coming down. Wait, what is it? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, the B is where it starts from. So what should the B be? Oh, let me read it. Um, Mom! I need the paper! You can read it on my screen, can't you? Not really, sorry. Yeah. Really? Small? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sorry. All right. So we got the Y of the airplane. Yeah. And the Y is going to be the height at any point in time of that airplane. Yeah. Notice that it starts at 2,000 feet. So what is B going to be? Uh, B is going to be 200. No, B. And the equation Y equals MX plus B. We've figured out that the M is minus 100 because it's descending, meaning going down, at 100 feet per second. So that's what slope means, is the rate of speed, okay? But the B is 2,000. So the equation for the airplane, where Y is the height at any point in time, is minus 100X plus 2,000. Notice uh, that oh, okay. X is zero then that thing comes out to be 2,000, which is where it's at, at time zero. My teacher said it was uh, minus 200. Well, that's Superman. And he's not minus 200, he's plus 200. In other words, we got two things going on here. We got the airplane that's coming down, starting at 2,000 feet. And we got Superman that's going up. Yeah. So yeah. what is Superman's equation? Uh, y equals 200x plus 1,100. Yeah. In other words, his starting height is 1,100. And his <laughs> rate of change is he's flying upwards at 200 feet per second. And remember, speed is m. That's what slope is, is that speed. Yeah. OK? So there's your two equations. One is for the, and I could really write this as H of the airplane, H being height, equals minus 100. And instead of X, let's use T, where T is time. Because that's really what we're talking about. In other words, if you want to figure out the height of the airplane after one second, you would use this equation. Yes. He's flying at 100 feet per second down. So T, instead of X, because what we're talking about as a variable is time. And the Y is the height at any point in time. So yeah. we've got the height of the airplane at any point in time is that equation. And I got the height of Superman at any point in time is this equation. Yeah. So that answers A yeah. and B. Yeah. C, how long until Superman reaches the plane in order to save it? Well, what are the relative heights going to be when Superman reaches the plane? 11,000 and 2,000? No. Well, no. Think about I, it. Hold on. Think, think about it. You got an airplane starting at 2,000 feet, headed down. You got Superman starting at a lower spot, 1,100 feet, going up. So when Superman reaches the plane, what are their heights going to be? What's each height? What's the height of the airplane going to be relative to the height of Superman? Well, might as well 1,000, it's going up 200. Not in numbers. I don't want numbers. I want concept. I want you to think about this. Superman's flying up. Airplanes flying down, when do they meet? When their heights are what? In the middle? No, they're equal. Oh, yeah. Right? When Superman reaches the airplane, they're at equal heights. So I'm going to set that height equal to that height. So now I have an algebra problem. That's all this is, is an algebra problem. Yeah. 
Now, how do I solve that? Here, let me write it again so that I have room. I don't run out of room on the left side. So I got minus 100T plus 2,000. That's the height of the airplane. And I'm saying that it has to equal the height of Superman, and his height is 200T plus 1,100. Now, solve that for me. Now we're back to arithmetic. That's all this is, is arithmetic. This is dividing and adding and subtracting. That's why that is so important, is you cannot do these problems unless you know how to do that other stuff. So tell me the first step in solving this equation. Well, you got to uh, take 2,000 from both sides. Okay. No, yeah. that's fine. That's not a bad starting spot. So that leaves this. Now, if I took 2,000 from the right side, I'm left with 900. Yeah. Actually, I'm left with negative 900, am I not? Yeah. In other words, I got 1,100 minus 2,000. That's minus 900. Yeah. And that's very important. Okay, next step. Uh, we have 900, and then you just subtract 900 from both sides. No, that's going to give me back to the same spot. In other words, I only have one number left in this equation. Here's the thing. When you're starting from there, that line, you see my check mark? Yeah. The goal is to gather all the terms that have a variable in it on one side and all the terms that are just numbers on the other side. So what you did was you put the numbers all on the right side. That's where this minus 900 yeah. came from. So let's get the 200T on the other side. So how do I do that? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, you, wait, what would you say? I, I, I can hear you. I'm trying to solve this equation. Solving a very, very simple, very, very basic equation. Got to be able to do that in algebra. Okay, so, so before that. I got the numbers all on one side. That's the only numbers. They're all by themselves without a variable. Now I got to get all the T's on one side, the other side. So how do I get that 200 T on the other side? You subtract it. Okay, so what's that leave as a next line? Uh, 300 plus 900? It's minus 300. Oh, yeah, minus 300. Get signs right. You cannot get a sign wrong and get a problem right. You're just not, it's not going to happen. You cannot, you got to have either positive or negative, whichever is the correct. So I've got, I've already got minus 100, and I'm uh -huh. subtracting 200. So what is that? That's just like what we do on our digital flashcards. What is that answer? Uh, 300. Minus 300. And it's yeah, maybe. T. Because there's a T with both of those. So now I got minus 300 T equals 900. 900. Yeah, now what is T equal to? You divide and it equals 3. Okay. So... Three seconds is how long it's going to take Superman to reach that airplane. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me look at what else they ask. I think that's it. No, they ask one last thing. What is that altitude? So, how do I figure out what is the altitude means height? Well, you plug in three for T. Okay, good. So that gives you minus 300 plus 2,000. What's the altitude? One. Wait. Sorry, I have to blow my nose. What I circled. Minus 300 plus 2,000. I can't see it. Minimize your go-to-meeting panel so that it doesn't take up all your space on your desktop. 
by minimizing oh, it, go up and click on the two arrows that are pointing towards one another. Oh, that's uh, 1,700, so 17,000 feet. Okay, 1,700 feet, not 17,000. Yeah, sorry, 1,700 feet is the altitude where Superman catches up with the airplane. Yeah. Okay, so that took care of problem number two. Let's go back and see if I got the newest email. Did your mom send another email? Yeah, looks like she did. Uh, upside down. Um, let me see if I got one that's right side up. This one's right side up. But it's also uh, higher problems. This one's upside down. What kind of camera is she using to take these pictures? Uh, phone camera. What kind? Phone. Does she know what kind of phone? Is it an iPhone or a Samsung? When you take the picture, it will show you how you're oriented. She's taking these upside down. And unfortunately, I don't think I have an, a, a way to turn them right side up. I, if I expand it, it'll rotate it by 90 degrees, but that doesn't help. Uh, in this case, I'm not even doing that. Um, let me see. Let me try one other thing here. Let me see. I, I got one page that we can work on, that I can read. Yeah, number one was pretty easy for me anyways. Well, one is a lot like two. In other words, one, the reason I wanted to do one first is because I could tell that it was going to be just like two. And yeah. two would be easier to do had we done one. But in this case, since it's we're running out of time, we only have 10 minutes. Which of these problems would you like to look at? Uh, we're looking at 10 down. I don't know that I can read nine. Um. Uh, Let's do the, ten. I'd probably like to do the other page that was slanted. Well, actually, that's no, pretty easy. I don't know how to do that. I can't rotate them for some reason. She's going to have to take them where they are vertically like this. Over 11? Okay, let's do 11. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So if I want the total cost, we'll call it TC. What is it based on this right here? Let me look. Total uh, charge. It's ten dollars per month plus fifty. Yeah. So what kind of an equation? And always think of these kind of equations. It's gonna look like y equal mx plus b. Y equals ten plus fifty. It's ten x plus fifty. Yeah, y equals ten x plus fifty. What is x? X is ten. No. What is x? What does x mean? What does the variable x mean? Uh, slow. How many months? The number of months that you join. Right? It says $10 yeah. per month. So if you join for two months, you're going to pay 20 plus 50. If you join for three months, you're going to pay 30 plus 50. So you always have to know what your variable means. Okay? Yeah. So if we do not take the special offer, write an equation that represents their regular fee. That's it right there. Oh, uh, yeah. But okay. you have to specify X is the number of months. You can't just 
not say that because if I give this as an answer, nobody knows what X is. So I'd have to say X is the number of months. Okay. Now, okay. question B. Write a second equation that represents the amount of money you would spend if you took the one-time offer. Well, the one-time offer is drops the enrollment fee but charges $15 a month. So let's call that number two. We'll call that total charge number one. And this is the special offer. What should it, its equation be? Yeah. What should its equation be? Uh, TC equals 15X plus uh, 50. What's this say? Oh, 25. No, what does that say right there that I'm underlining? Read it. What's it say? Offer that drops the enrollment fee. Okay, button. hold on. What does that mean? It's not $50. How much is it? <laughs> zero. zero. Oh, yeah, 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 zero. So it's plus zero, which means you don't need to write it. In other words, the equation for the second deal is 15x. That's it. It's still in the form of y equal mx plus b. It's just that b is zero. Yeah. All right. So we got that answered. We got uh, that answered. Graph your two equations. Well, that's relatively easy to do. I can graph them on the same thing. This one has a y-intercept at 50, has a slope of 10. Looks approximately like that. This yeah. one has a y-intercept of what? The second one. Let me see. I can't see it. TC number 2. What's its y-intercept? The equation is TC number 2 equals... Oh, the y-intercept is 0. So it's starting at the... Uh, exactly. It's 0. Yeah. But it's got a steeper slope. So it's got a slope that's a little bit steeper than the previous one. In other words, the previous slope was 10. This slope is 15. Okay? You with me? Yeah. So I yeah. graphed it. Okay, so now we've done A, B, and C. After how many days will the one-time offer be the better deal? Well, how am I going to figure that out? What I first need to figure out is at what point X is the number of days, not months, in this deal. No, X is still the... Oh, wow. Hold on a second. I think this is a typo, but when they say how many days, I think they mean how many months. Maybe not, but how am I going to figure out where these are equal? In other words, this point right here over on the chart where they cross, that is the time where the two deals will be exactly the same. Yeah. Well... How do I figure out what that is? In other words, what is the value of X where TC1 is equal to TC2? How do I figure that out? Um, well, you got to write down both of the slopes first. And then the, and oh, what's hold the, on, hold on. Let's not do this graphically. Let's do it algebraically. How can uh -huh. you tell algebraically? In fact, I'm going to get rid of the graph because I don't want you to look at it. It's very important to be able to solve two equations and two unknowns. What do we know about this? What do we know about TC1 and TC2? For this question, number D, when will it be the same? When will TC1 equal TC2? That's what they're asking. Um, 
How do I solve that? Well, you subtract, right? Uh -huh. Don't you subtract? If TC1 is equaling TC2, then the right side of TC1 has to be equal to the right side of TC2. So yeah. I write an equation that I'm going to solve. There's the right side of TC1. And I'm saying that has to be equal to the right side of TC2. And now I've got one equation, only one unknown. I can solve it. How do I solve this equation? Uh, Again, uh, you're trying to put all the terms that have variables in them on one side of the equation, all the numbers yeah. on the other. Um, dude, I'm so confused. I don't know why. What's that? I'm confused. <laughs> all right. Here, let's do something. Here's the problem. We've managed to turn the problem into this. That is TC1. That's the total cost if you take their original plan. Their second offer is TC2, which is that. They want to know when those two things are equal. Well, we're looking at one equation and only one unknown, x. So that means we can solve it. We can always solve it. The question is how. And yeah. the key response is, let's talk algebra for a moment. Forget everything up to now. Yeah. What we need to do is solve this algebraic equation. You need to be able to do that. Okay. Absolutely need to be able to do it. The way to do it is you put all your variables on one side, all your numbers on another. Which side are we going to put the variables on? Well, we're going to put the variables on on the side with 10x. So we're going to subtract 50x. No. And oh, no. That's the reason oh. why. If we do that, we're going to have a negative number in front of the x. We don't like negative numbers. We like positive numbers. So yeah. let's subtract 10x from both sides. And that's going to leave a positive number on the left. And it's going to leave 5x, a positive number on the right. So we subtract 15x from both sides, right? And no. then we get 5x. You're subtracting 10x from both sides. Yeah, 10x from both sides, and then we get 5x, and then we divide 5x by 50, and then that equals 10. That means after 10 months, the two yeah. prices will be the same. In other words, if you joined this gym and you stayed there exactly 10 months, it wouldn't matter whether you use that or that. Okay. Yeah, I understand. That. But anything greater than 10 months, that's going to be more expensive. Yeah, I understand that. Notice the two charts. One chart went like this, and the other chart went like that. Yeah. This was the 15x chart. So beyond yeah. that break-even point, which is at 10, the 15X is always higher, more expensive than the other one. So yeah, I if I plug in 11, this is going to be a bigger number than this. If I plug okay. in 12, it's going to be a bigger number. If I plug in 9, it's going to be a smaller number. It's going to be down there. In other words, if I plug in nine, if I know I'm only going to be alive for nine months and I'm joining this gym, I'm going to take the 15X. It'll be cheaper. These are real life problems. In other words, this these are problems you're faced with all the time in life. You go to join a gym, they frequently have two different plans. And if you want to compare the plans... You need to figure yeah. out where the break-even is. And in this case, the break-even was after 10 months. Now, that's why I say this is a typo, 
because their question is, after how many days will the one-time offer be better? And guess what? You can't answer that because everything else is in terms of months. Some months have 31, some months have 30. I think he did say, I think he did say there was a typo. It is a typo. It has to be. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to answer the question. In other words, this should say months instead of days. And that's really important. You have to have the units be the same. Otherwise, yeah. you can't do the problem. If every month had 30 days, then I would say 10 months is 300 days. And so I could be able to answer the problem. But given yeah. that months have different kind of days in them, you can't yeah. answer it the way he's asked it. So the only way it makes sense at all is if that says months instead of days. Or okay. if this said days up here instead of months. But that's not I the way gym memberships work. They do it on a monthly basis. All right. Jackson, I'm going to let you go. Uh, you been working on your digital flashcards? Yeah, I've been working on them. Good. You need to get good at those. Not just good, you need to get great at them. Okay. Okay, and the reason you need to be great is because if you're just good, you're going to go to a calculator. Before long, good isn't enough. If you're only to get 90% of them right, you're going to end up going to a calculator, and then you'll never learn them. So yeah. to avoid going to a calculator, you got to get great. you got to get 99% of them. By that, I mean you need to spend 10 minutes on that thing without missing one. That's when you will yeah. be good at it or great. Okay? Okay. All right, Jackson. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.